Hey, thank you for joining me again this week. Last week, we looked at how God, this is in Acts chapter 9, and, and yeah, chapter 9, we looked at how God intervened with the lives of normal people and how God was working in their lives to do supernatural things. And so he uses ordinary people to touch ordinary people right where they are. So if you live wherever you live, um, unless God calls you to be a missionary, he calls you to reach those people right there where you are. So the apostle Peter was there in a place called Lydda, and um, he touched a man called Aeneas and a, a lady named Dorcas. And, um, you know, these people had problems. Aeneas was paralyzed, and Dorcas, even though a nice person, had died. You know, as far as I know, these people were believers, and these things happened to them. And, you know, many who are on the fringes of following Jesus don't understand or don't have the experience or knowledge to see that he came to save us from our sins. By this I mean Jesus didn't come to make your life smooth. He didn't come to make you happy. He didn't come to send so that he could send the Holy Spirit to be your genie to grant you three or more wishes. You know, um, hard times come with life. Why? Because when God created the heavens and the earth, He created them perfect, but then sin intervened in that. And so, so that's why we have problems today. Okay? Jesus even said, in this world, you will have trouble. The NIV says that. And um, the New Living Translation says, Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows. And in the world you will have tribulation, the English Standard Version says. And then the Amplified Bible tries to comfort us with this. In the world you will have tribulation and distress and suffering. Of course, I was joking about comforting us. But they expand on the things that we go through. You know, this doesn't mean that we will um, walk in endless, in an endless maze of trouble and tribulation and distress and suffering. But it does mean we will experience hardship like everyone else. But the plus that we have is that the creator of the universe is our father. Because we have chosen to become his children by receiving his son, Jesus. You know, having Jesus in your life isn't an escape from problems. So, why do I, why am I getting into this? It's because sometimes we think that the people in the Bible, they had it good. And just an occasional story tells, tells about some problems. You know, so... The question is, how do we handle these things in our lives? You know, I'll tell you, um, but let me let me just address this thing first, okay? About the those who are on the fringes of following Jesus. These are those who have certain things that identify them, and here are some of those things. Number one, and I'm this is not. Because an exhaustive list or the perfect sequences of all of these are just some of the things that I've noticed over the time. And because I've noticed them, um, first I've noticed them right here in me. And so let me just bring up some of these things. Uh, number one, they blame God for the hard times they go through. And I, I'm not, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go into detail about many of these. Okay, number two, they blame others for the hard times that they go through. It's all your fault. You ever heard that? Number three, they only want God to control only the bad things that they pray about. The rest, such as their sinful habits, angry outbursts, lack of love, lack of patience. 
and other things that they haven't submitted to God or even asked for his help. You know, huh, okay, I'll, I'll go on because I can get off on this. Okay, uh, and number four, they are those who talk a good talk about loving God and loving their neighbor, which Jesus said all the law and the prophets come under these two commandments, which is just really one. Okay, how can you say you love God and hate your neighbor? Or how can you say you love your neighbor and hate God? They're, they're stuck together. They are intricately within, woven, within, woven <laughs> together. Okay, but, you know, these people, they have this, but they have little evidence in their life to prove that they love God or even love their neighbor. Some of them get perturbed when their neighbor asks them for help. Perturbed, big word. Okay, you know, I could go on, but what I am saying is this. If you are offended by what I just, that short little list that I just put up, ask God to help you with it. You know, acknowledging your problem, acknowledging you have a problem is, someone said, is most of the answer, right? He not only forgives us God, God not only forgives us when we confess or admit we have sinned, but also promises to help cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's all unrighteousness. He doesn't just leave, ah, that's okay, that little bad thing, you can hang on to that. No, he wants to help us with all because he knows that it just comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's John chapter 10 and verse 10. So, you know, we got the best deal. We confess and He cleanses. But it starts with a total, all-in surrender. You cannot come to God halfway. You cannot, you cannot have one, one foot in, on this side and one foot on the other. Or you cannot straddle the fence. Somebody said when you straddle the fence, you just get hurt. That's all. Now, how did I get to this message? You know, I was practicing some praise and worship songs for our church, and I came across an old song uh, written by this guy, Justin Wheeler Van Deventer and Winfield Scott Whedon. These guys were born in the mid-1800s, and they wrote this song. That's how old this song is. It's called, I Surrender All. The first verse goes like this, all to Jesus I surrender, all to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily live. And of course the chorus says, I surrender all. Yeah, so I was practicing that because I need practice. He goes, I surrender all, I surrender all, all to Thee my blessed Savior, I surrender all. You know, I, I know I'm going to get ahead of myself by saying making this next statement, but I kind of find myself singing instead, help me to surrender all. Help me to surrender all. Right? The second verse says, All to Jesus I surrender, humbly at His feet I bow. Worldly pleasures all forsaken, take me, Jesus, take me now. Have you heard people say that? They're going through hard times. Oh, Jesus, come on, just take me already. You know, and I don't know how many times I've heard this, but most times it's when people are struggling with things in their life and they just think, man, if, if God just takes me now, I don't have to deal with this. But then he don't grow through stuff like that. And so God wants to help us grow through it. Can you see wh why I'm addressing this? It's because even me, I'm... I'm dealing with surrendering to God everything, it all. Many have the idea that it is God's job to rid us of our sinfulness. But the Bible plainly states it is a metamorphosis or a process. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 says, Do not copy the behavior and customs of this world. But let God transform you into the new person 
into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. That's the New Living Translation. Now, yeah, I like, I've memorized most of my scriptures with the King James. So the King James says this, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may be able, uh, or that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You know, the word used here is transformed in the Greek language. Or, um, and, and that word, it means, uh, it means to, to change from one thing into another. And that's where we get our word metamorphosis. And um, I know I'm not pronouncing this for all the Greek scholars out there. But the word is metamorpho. We would say, that's how we would say it in English. I'm sure that's not how they say it in the Greek. It means to change into another form, to transform, to transfigure. Transformation is something that begins when we receive Jesus by giving Him our life. That's what the Bible talks about, being born again. We've been born, we got this life, physical life, right? And when we receive Jesus, we're born into a spiritual, everlasting life because this life was going to end one day. Okay? When this happens, when we give God our life and we receive Jesus, God receives us as His children. That's what John chapter 1 and verse 12 says. And the process of transformation begins. You know, some who have prayed to receive Jesus think that that's all they need to do. Now they're going to heaven. But you know what? That's just the beginning. It's the beginning of your journey, awesome journey, I would say, with God. You know, ask any seasoned believer. They will tell you it takes a lifetime of transformation and even longer to be like Jesus. Right? People have idols in the world. Oh, I want to be like that person. I want to be like this person. But as believers, our goal is to be like the Son of God, like Jesus. Okay? So what now? What do we do if we find ourselves with one foot in the world and one foot in the Spirit, like Romans chapter 8 talks about? Well, it starts with repentance. Someone once described repentance as the act of turning around from the wrong way to the right way. You know, it's like when you're driving. You find out, oh, your GPS says, hey, you're going the wrong way. Make a U-turn. That's what it is. Repentance is making a U-turn. Because if you continue in the way that you're going, it's not going to be good. Okay, the Greek word is metanoia, which means a change of mind as it appears to one who repents of a purpose he has formed or something he has done. Have you ever gotten to that point where, you know, you believe something so much and then you found out you were wrong? <laughs> I know, it's not, it's, not, it's not easy to admit that. But when you find out you was wrong, it's like, wow, all this time I've been espousing this thing telling people about it, awesome, That's, eh, eh, and now we find out we're wrong. So what do we do? We're heading the wrong way. We turn around. You know, I actually, it actually happened to me when I used to paddle on a wall. I used to, guys used to tell stories and all this, and I just made up a story one time. I made up a story and, I, and all of this stuff, and after I received the Lord, one day they were talking stories, and somebody said, hey, John, what's that story you used to tell us? And I said, oh, yeah. And right when they said, oh, yeah, I, I just stopped. And they were just looking at me. And while they were looking at me, the Holy Spirit told me, you know, you made up that story. It's a lie. And I just made it up, you know, so I could be one of the boys, right? Just be accepted. And so I stopped. And in that instant like that, the Lord spoke to me. And the guy said, well... You can tell us the story. I said, you know, guys, I made up the story. It's a lie. And they said, what? I said, yeah, the story I told you was a true story. I made it up. It was a lie. And they just looked at me and said, 
Oh, tell us the story anyway. <laughs> That's how it was. You know, admitting we have a problem is the hardest part because of our pride. That's right. Which is considered to be the foundation of all sin. The devil didn't say to Eve, you know what? Um, you're going to have more money. You're going to have all of this stuff. No, he appealed to her pride. How did he know how to appeal to it? Because he was dealing with this. He deals with the same thing the devil does. He said, God knows that in the day that you eat of that fruit, you're going to be just like him. And he doesn't want you to be like him. Of course, that's a lie. Plus, God already knows the things we struggle with. You know, and and he, he knows even the deepest, darkest secrets that we have. And he still wants to help us. That's the kind of awesome God he is. You know, a line in a popular song, a worship song says, When I was your foe, still your love fought for me. You know, this is the kind of love that God has for everyone. Just imagine, Jesus was on the cross. Jesus was on the cross. And these guys were in the act of crucifying him. He was on there hanging in the act of dying. Not Well, not acting. He was dying. And yet he said, Father, forgive them. Because they don't know what they are doing. Remember? Last week, well, not last week, but the week before last, we talked about the guy named Saul. It says that when a, a man named Ananias came and prayed for him, it was like scales fell off of his eyes. I don't think they only fell off of his physical eyes so he could see, but off of his spiritual eyes, and he realized that he was wrong. So what did he do? He went about and he started telling people that the very Jesus, the very people he was persecuting because of Jesus, that they were right and that he was wrong. And he began to teach them from the Bible the things that he was persecuting them for. Wow. You know, it takes a lot to do that. And so, um, we should do that right now. You should, if you've never done that, you should do it right now. If you are one of those that are on the fringes. You know, you're just like, well, I don't know. If Jesus came back today, let me ask you the question this. If Jesus came back today, would you go to heaven? And he, and he came to, you know, to settle accounts. Would you go to heaven? Or would you go to hell? Somebody asked me that one day. In fact, my cousin asked me that one day. He said, he said to me, so what, you think you're going to heaven? And I said, yeah, I'm going to heaven. He said, how you know? I said, because I'm a good guy. It's like, the Bible doesn't say good people go to heaven. Only born again people. So I got born again. Yeah. So turn to Jesus, and in doing so, you are turning away from wrong motives, wrong thinking, wrong habits, wrong actions, wrong assumptions, and wrong in general. Do it today. Let's pray. Lord, I pray for my friends. As we go through this life, we will encounter distresses, tribulation, problems. But you, according to Psalms 46.1, are an ever-present help in our time of need. So help us to turn from our sin and be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Help us, Lord. Our thinking sometimes is thinking, thinking. And we need it to be right. And you said you will help us if we ask. So we ask right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. Hi, Mom. And brother Keone. Hey, mahalo for watching. Aloha.